YouTube, what's good? It's your boy, Hold It Down Dre, and thank y'all for tuning in for another episode. Welcome to the beginning of my series of Sock Analyst Tier 1. So some prerequisites that will be good for this course is you have some fundamental knowledge of networking, and if you need help with that, I'm going to put the link for my OSI layer episode down there so y'all can go ahead and get a feel for it. Also, simple navigation of Windows and Linux operating system, and once you do that, Come back to this course and I get you taken care of. So, with that being said, before we even begin, I'm going to need y'all to like, share, subscribe, comment, give me some feedback, and then after the theme song, I'm going to holla at y'all. YouTube, thank y'all for tuning back in. While the theme song was playing, I had to make me a little bit of tea. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, for real. So, welcome to the basic course of a SOC analyst. So, so, starting with the first one, we're going to talk about a tier one security analyst, also known as a SOC analyst. A tier one cybersecurity analyst is simply also known as a triage specialist, which entails when you triage, you're categorizing alerts based off the seriousness of the alert. And also, you're investigating, you're like the first line of defense to see whether or not, okay, is this malicious? Is this actual work activity? How serious is this alert actually is? And you use different tools to actually investigate the alerts. So you can use different tools like a EDR, SIM tools. Based off the events that happen, you can check logs to actually see what's going on to actually categorize the alert properly. And also one thing to take in consideration is that all analysts, no matter if you're tier one, tier two, or tier three, you all work in something called a SOC. A SOC stands for Security Operations Center. So Security Operations Center, also known as SOC, is simply a center where all three different tiers of analysts operate together and work in. So typically what I see is that SOCs are 24 hours and they usually have different shifts of people so that way the SOC never was empty. I've seen it broken down to where there's three different shifts and they have eight hour shifts apiece, or either people work 12 hour shifts and it's only composed of two teams and the list goes on. But that's pretty much the gist of a SOC. So when you start off in cybersecurity as a SOC analyst, you will be inside of a security operations center. The different tools you will use, no matter you're a tier one, tier two, or tier three, will be something called EDRs and SIMS. SIM stands for Security Information Event Management. It collects all the different logs from different systems that you use and aggregates all the logs to be in one application. For example, it would be to determine if somebody clicked on a malicious link, was actually on a site they wasn't supposed to be on, you can use the logs from a sim to determine whether or not they did it and you can deeper investigate it. So that's your job as a tier one. You actually are the first line of defense. So if anything comes to the logs, you're the, you're the first people to really see it. Another tool that we use is the EDR, Endpoint Detection and Response. One tool that I like to use for EDRs is CrowdStrike. The endpoint, for those who don't know, is literally a device. You can literally have a phone or a laptop. That's considered an endpoint. It tracks the actual activity of your devices. For example, I can use, I download a file and I execute a file hash then it will show up on CrowdStrike and I can actually investigate it using tools to see whether or not it's malicious or not. And EDRs also have logs as well, but it's solely based on the actual endpoints. Whereas like a SIM, you can use it for multiple purposes. Another thing that you'll realize that you have to use as a SOC analyst is ticketing. So some ticket structures that we use would be ServiceNow, Archer, and the list goes on. There's so many different platforms, but a very popular one that I've seen is ServiceNow. So when it comes to ticketing, so for example, let's say I'm a tier one and I need an actual website that needs to be blocked so nobody in our workforce accesses it. I might have to create a ticket to put in a request for somebody above my pay grade to actually block the actual link. There's different reasons why you can do it. It's usually because it's something that you need to be done that you can't do. Or to give you like a short glimpse, like everybody has some type of 
tool that they use to actually build their cases. So if you're investigating an alert, you need to show proof and explain why something's malicious, like screenshots that you're taking ownership of the actual alert. And also to threats, you have to stay updated with different threats. I like to use Twitter. Twitter is really good. And you can also use different any news article you pretty much want, like Hacker One, and the list goes on as far as that. When it comes to a SOC analyst, you don't want to be lazy. You want to actually stay up to date with everything so you don't want to be behind. So that way you can understand how these threat patterns are working and all that stuff. In a SOC, when an actual device is actually malicious, we typically isolate that device that's infected from our network so that way malicious activity doesn't spread throughout our workforce with that being said if you did everything in your power to investigate an alert and you can't take it no further or you don't understand something because you don't have enough tools to actually investigate it because somebody above you can access it then that's where you switch it over to tier two so tier two think of tier two as like a higher step so there's a total of three tiers you have tier one tier two tier three so tier ones is typically known as the junior analyst tier two is known as the incident responders and tier three is known as the threat hunters that's typically how it goes but a lot of times it varies based off whatever sock you're working in but tier two usually does a deeper analysis of the investigations that you've conducted if you can't find the answers or some or they usually have more higher access to a tool that you usually don't have for example if i'm working in a sim like splunk and i see an alert and it keeps triggering and it keeps going off keeps going off i cannot suppress it meaning like turn it off because i know that alert is actually it's a false positive meaning that okay, this alert isn't malicious at all. Like this is somebody clicking a website at work that's actually a friendly website. What happens is you can put in a request to send it to tier two and tier two can give you the authorization to actually press that alert to keep it from triggering. But as a tier one, you can't do that because you don't have the access for that. The main responsibility is just to handle more complicated alerts that we can't handle on our level. And honestly, I'll be honest, it usually comes with experience. So that's why they're in that position. We got tier three, which are known as threat hunters. They even become more advanced than tier twos. Tier three does an even deeper analysis on actually how things work. So they have an actual tactic called reverse engineering which is simply backpedaling and actually looking at an actual attack, a malicious attack to see exactly how it works. And once they understand that pattern, they can relay it back to the tier twos and the tier ones. They're pretty much like the leads, the subject matter expertise when it comes to the actual SOC within the tiers of the SOC analysts. They do a lot of threat hunting as well. So threat hunting is just simply what it says. You're hunting for threats on your actual system to see if there's any patterns like a lateral movement or just anything that just seems suspicious that you can catch to make sure that there's no unauthorized access activity going on within your workspace. They literally want to understand how something works, how something malicious works. Now that we have a total of all the three different tiers and you also know what a SOC is, Security Operations Center. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to do a lab on try hacking and I want to show you guys exactly what a sim looks like, what's the actual navigation and what to look for when you're a tier one. Remember, this is the beginning. So I'm going to try to hold your hand while talking about this. OK, so now we're on the lab. Um, this is a lab from try hacking. So pretty much this is the explanation I was given as far as a sim. This a virtual example that you can see the sim you can see that it entails the actual the countries and where the threats are coming from and then you'll see here exactly the actual analysis of okay this is the 30 percent of these alerts are coming from attacks 30 are suspicious so meaning that it doesn't look based off the categorization it could be malicious but it's unusual activity and then you have here which is 40% information 
meaning that it can be something as far as you know like oh like an email was sent to actual to actually notify you of something of like a new thread or playing i already done the lab but i'm going to explain what i did to help you guys understand so we'll just start with the first question what is the malicious ip address in the alerts so as you can see you have a successful ssh which means secure shell uh it's usually what you use what a client uses to, uh, to properly authenticate to log inside their actual system. But they got a successful authentication attempt to port 22, which is also port 22 is SSH from IP address 221-181-185-159. And see, it always comes with the dates. These are, this is what an actual log looks like. So now the next activity is unauthorized connection attempt. From the IP address the same IP address from before so yes the SSH the secure shell authentication attempt was successful but the connection attempt was wrong and unauthorized because that IP address is a suspicious one we're not familiar with that IP address so obviously it's showing that somebody is trying somebody on authorized is trying to access a system that they're not allowed to do and you can see the difference green okay and then red so what was the malicious ip address in these alerts so that's why i took this ip address typed it and i got a correct answer for it right so now we're going to fast forward so whom did you escalate the event associated with the ip address with the malicious ip address so Remember, before we even do that, determine how it's malicious. So what you're going to do is, this is IP scanner, for example, this can be an example of a open source intelligence tool that you can use to see exactly if this IP address is malicious or not. And if you don't know what an IP address is, I have a link that I will share after this video to explain to you. Just paste that suspicious IP address inside your OSINT tool IP scanner. Submit. Ooh, see, it's showing it's malicious. So it shows 100% where it's coming from, the city, and the domain name, and the internet service provider. So that's why it's good to use OSINT tools. I use it plenty of times uh, as a tier one. So I use tools like Virus Total, Blue Coat, Semantic, and the list goes on. I can go on and on about all the tools I use. But that verifies exactly that I have a malicious IP address. So, and again, like I said, I pasted it in there. So we go next. So who would you like to escalate this event to? So. We're not going to send it to a sales executive because they don't deal with anything relating to cybersecurity. Hell, if something's wrong in their side, they send it to us if they get hacked. We're not going to send it to a security consultant because their responsibility is pretty much like setting up the security infrastructure. They're not within the SOC like we are. They're not a tier one, tier two, tier three. Okay, information security architect. No, because information security architect, like I said, they're they're also in charge of building the infrastructure as well. Like so you're not gonna send it to them because they're not incident response. That's not their, their main job. Now, would you send it to a SOC security operations team lead? Most likely. See, because now we're dealing with something that's actually within our organization. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Will Griffin because now Will, he actually can take it a step further, deeply investigate and remember he can use those tools that we actually don't have access to. He can do these deep investigations and use different queries and all that stuff. So we're gonna choose him. So I put Will Griffin for the answer for that because he's actually the person that's associated with the malicious I, I mean he's the actual person that we escalated it to in order to remediate that ip address 
So now what you want to do is you want to block this actual firewall. I mean, you actually want to block this IP address using a firewall block list. So if you don't know what a firewall is, just think of firewall as a door. Somebody's trying to, would you let a stranger inside your house? Exactly. So think of a firewall as a door that only allows which you allow to come through. So with that being said, when it comes to a block list, these are the previous IP addresses that they have on the list. So what do you think we're going to do with that actual IP address that we found that was malicious? Of course, we're going to block it. So we're going to take this IP address over here, copy it, and then we're just going to paste it in there. See, and you block the malicious IP address. And what you would do is copy that because this is known as a flag. Um, so this is the message that the malicious actor left until we meet again. So you'll paste that in there and you'll get the correct answer. So that's pretty much it as far as the lab. Um, so I gave you a quick synopsis of everything that happened. You know, we had the SIM tool, remember a SIM security information event management and they literally have logs showing events that happen within the workforce to show okay who connected with who who's clicking on what who logged into what system different alerts that were tuned right and then i showed you exactly how this pie chart is broken up to and every every sock is different too so don't expect yours to look like this. Like I use Splunk mainly. I'm pretty sure this is just try hack me's sim, but you'll see a lot of sims that you'll use will probably be a little bit more advanced looking, but it's just the main gist of it. So that's pretty much it. Thank y'all for tuning in today. And please like, share, subscribe, and comment. And see y'all next episode.